are extremely proud and happy to have our American, North American, no, US American premier here. We were in Toronto two weeks ago. Um, different country, I know. I, I said America there, which was the other mistake. I, mean. <laughs> I always think I'm not nervous, but then when I'm saying something wrong, I realize I am. Um, uh, I'm very happy to be here tonight, today, uh, and I'm not here on my own. I'm here with um, my producer and members of the group that we'll meet later on. But I'm also here with the most important woman of this film, <laughs> my main actress, Vicky Krebs. and you go really inside the psyche of the, of the character. So can you talk about what inspired you to make this film? One can think obviously of more contemporary and recent figure uh, in the media, but going back to CC. I'm trying to make this brief. Um, Vicky and I did another film together um, seven or eight years ago, and after that we wanted to work together again. And at some point, Vicky said to me, why don't we make a film about Empress Elizabeth? Which, at that point, I was not interested in, because I grew up in Austria, where she is um, the main tourist magnet next to Mozart. And she's not cool, she's not interesting for me or for anyone in Austria. <laughs> um, so I was not really uh, into that, and I didn't uh, really intend to make a period film. Uh, but that, then, at some point, I, I realized that uh, it somehow stayed with me, uh, her saying that, and then I started reading and doing research and meeting historians and going to the museums and the archives and just finding out more about her and I was really looking for something in a material that would resonate with me in a way that it would be interesting for me to make a film about her and really tell a story about that woman um, um, in not, not only a biography or something, but something that would still have to do with me and with us today. And what I found really was um, certain small acts of rebellion that I found really interesting. And I, I thought it could be a good story about a woman, um, like who, like every woman, then and now, is raised um, uh, believing that she has to please in order to be loved. I think we still are. And that's why uh, it was important to make this film for me. So Vicky was sort of your idea, but at the time were you thinking about playing the role and and that's why you suggested it to Marie? Or it was just like you thought it was something interesting to, to 
study and to share and to film? Um, I think both. I mean, one is that we wanted to work again, and I wasn't planning on making her an actress, so <laughs> was we going to be the actress? So I knew, you know, it would be close to, to play. Um, but I found it just interesting in general, yeah, because when I was, I came across her when I was a young girl, I grew up, you know, very free and not having to be the princess, and there were no princess uh, stories in my house, because my mother was very emancipated. Um, I grew up to climb on trees, but then my neighbor had all the princess movies of Sissi. And of course I was interested and I wanted to see it. And I loved it also as a girl, I wanted to to also be the princess, you know, because it somehow it gets to us. And uh, then at 15 I read the viral thing, they had the book there. And I could feel there was something behind the curtain. There was something, some sadness or and I was too young to understand what it was, but I could relate to it somehow. Because I think even at 15, being free, I could feel the corset of the society, you know, that I had, in order to be a girl, I had to be a girl, you know, which means to be cute and lovely and nice, and, but not too much, but you know, blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, and I think I could relate to something of a woman who's much older and further away. And then when we worked together, I had then grown and become a grown-up. I think, not really, I mean, it's still not really working, but I'm not really. Um, something of a grown-up, but I became a mother, and I had two children. And when we were working, I had a baby that I was, my son was breastfeeding at the time. And I felt really struck by this thing that I felt again imprisoned in my body, but for other reasons. You know, when I was younger, I felt imprisoned because I was defined by my body, you know, oh, you're a girl, so you have to be sexy, or you have to be, you're an object of desire, or you're, you're always something because of your body, but you'd never choose it, it just happens to you, so to me it often felt like a prison, and then I had two children, and the same thing happened again, and now I had to be a mother, and this became almost like a prison, now you have to behave this, you know, you don't behave like you don't have children, and now you behave like you have children, and I, I'm really bad at behaving. <laughs> 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 Which is, I think, then again, the main idea why I wanted to make the movie, you know, to talk about the misbehaving as a woman. It's, it's kind of interesting. And also, I'm reading like the world of Sisi in Europe, I mean, not just Austria, is completely like, like famous and have a certain image, especially the, the, I mean, the trilogy. So, this country tried to revisit this a little bit with, with Ludwig, and I've thought about like a certain scene, especially when she's on her horse, it, it did remind me of Ludwig and um, the relationship with her cousin. But it's, it's weird as an actress to have to, it's nearly meta because you have to push out, out of your body, like the previous incarnation, it's, it's so famous of Sissi, but you're like, mm, how can I play that? Like, will, will people believe in me? Yeah, well, that, 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 that is exactly what interested me, was that, you know, as an actress, I'm supposed to also please. I'm also supposed to do this so that you like it, you know. I'm supposed to do it in a way that you like me. But that's really what doesn't interest me. So I wanted to do something where, Almost as if I could take Romy Schneider by my hand and say, let's go and misbehave. Like she had to behave. She had to always be, uh, you know, the beautiful woman. And maybe she would have wanted to, but she was then not yet still allowed. Not completely. And uh, so that was exactly my, I don't know, what, what, what drove me and gave me energy to, to, do, to, to do this. Uh, well, it's good that you went along with the idea and, uh, and to be able to embody this um, on screen. But I also really love the way you went beyond the traditional like, uh, period piece. Uh, there's a lot of the, uh, the framing of the film, the way you work with the cinematography, it's also very modern, the use of music. I think there's a song by Camille in it that comes uh, several times. 
Um, there's a little bit of like, you know, things that are not historically correct, that change the way we, we see the film and we perceive her. So can you talk about your approach uh, when you were working on the film and filming, um, how you developed this? I mean, when you're, when you're talking about such a famous character, um, you know, you cannot made everybody happy. So it was clear from the beginning that whatever I would do, people would tell me this was not correct or this was totally different and uh, you got that wrong. So um, in a way, very early in the research process, I realized that there was not um, a way to do that uh, in, a, in a perfect way. I could only do it my way. Because also when you read the biographies, for example, um, they are always um, very much influenced by the person who wrote it and by the time it was written in. So it's always an interpretation. Um, another Austrian director who I admire very much, Jessica Hausmann, she did one period film and she was asked, blah, 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 was this correct or not? And she, oh, this was not correct, somebody said to her. And she said to him, were you there? <laughs> and that was actually what drove me all the time. It was like we were all not there. And also it was another time, there was no press and it is today, there were no social medias, there were no home stories, there was, there's no interview existing with her. So there is really uh, a lot of um, a lot of blank pages, you, you can only know so much and so all of the rest is, is fiction anyway. Um, and then the second thing is that it was clear that I, was, I, would, not, I would not be able to make a period film uh, the perfect period film in terms of what the audience is used to. Because what the audience is used to are the big period films with a Hollywood budget. And we could not do that with European budgets, just not possible. So it was very clear that we would have to find our own way uh, and, and do something uh, which, which we would, uh, which would not feel like uh, making a lot of compromises, but doing the film that we wanted to do. And then also, I mean, it was all a process that the, the music was already in the script, not the Camille song, but all the other songs were already in the script. So I, I, I got these questions very early on in the financing. What are you going to do with the music? Is that serious? Are you really going to use modern music? Why and how? Uh, and then this continued when I started working with the um, production designer and costume designer who, who showed me things, the original furniture, the original clothing, and I was always like, no, that's too much, I don't like it, that's too much fabric, too much decoration, I like this one better. And then they, they used to say, no, that, that was 20 years later. And I said, at, at some point I said, I don't care, let's take this, it's much more beautiful. And then we came up with the concept of showing an image of an empire which was already crumbling, which it was. Um, so this was also part of the concept to, um, the idea was um, the expensive furniture had already been sold. That was the concept for the decoration. And so all of this played together and it became, um, it became a great process collaborating with all these other creatives in the team who would also bring their ideas to this concept and prop by, props buyers who would come to me and say, I found something, I know it's not you know, but it's so cool, can we use it? So we were all in this together and finding finding a look for the film and an atmosphere for the film, and this is really something I enjoyed very much, and which is why I love making films, because you're collaborating and you're creating it together. It certainly has a very unique look, but you don't expect for something that's set in that time, uh, with that character, and but it also makes it like so personal and so much easier to relate to it and to be drawn in, in, in a world. I don't love like classical historical film that much, but when I see this, like, I just want to like, oh, it's such an interesting, intelligent way of revisiting this and, and making it like so lively and, and so much more touching also. I love that it, I love so much that it worked out because we were not sure. My first AD is German, he's very controlled and very strict with me. And he was always like, what kind of film is this going to be? I mean, I don't have to understand it, but you must know. And I said, I don't know either. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just going after my emotions and my intuition, and, and, and that's something we share, I think. That we are both very intuitive, and we do our preparation and research, but then we let go of everything. We just, we just try to be in a moment and create. I'm glad you uh, came along here to just share it, <laughs> and then we, we all agree that it was not a mistake. <laughs> Thank you. You did mention mistakes in your introduction, you said to dress up 
mistakes and there was mistakes had home, so now we want to know what what they are. But I, what I meant is more like, you know, what is a mistake? Because a mistake is a mistake once you fail. And if you succeed, it's sort of a mistake. So what I want to say is, we took the risk of making a mistake. We took the, as she said, when we were doing this, I had no clue this would work. I really thought, maybe no one would like her. You know, I never dared to play characters so cold in a way, or so, like you really, I mean, I don't know how you feel, but I think in order to follow her, you really have to go to her. And usually, or when I was younger and I was starting to be an actress, I was told that I have to go and get the audience and not lose the audience, and, you know, which is also a way of pleasing. And I never liked that in acting, that I was supposed to catch something, or, you know, I, I always trusted the audience to find me, or find the, the character, or find the story, even if it's hidden or So, that's what I meant, you know, it, it could have been a mistake, because I didn't know when I was doing it, and we didn't know. So we were both making the movie like blindfolded people who just, we almost never talked, and we were just looking at each other across the room, and I was very, you know, in order to pull off the ampers, which I really thought I couldn't, and the first day I was crying, because I, I said I cannot go out there and be an empress, you know, how is this working? Like, they would laugh at me. And one way I found was I was really not approachable. We, we talked about it together. So we didn't much talk. It was really just seeing Marie and looking at me. Sometimes we had tears in our eyes at the same moment. But that was all. We really didn't talk so much. It was like, yeah, sleepwalking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's something that you embodied often in your film. You have a very ethereal presence, but also you're very grounded. And, and this is what your character also represents, which is a very subtle way of being as a ghost or in the air, but also extremely present and not worse. And, and it's something that comes from your work also. And Sissi at that age is also even more ethereal and also more grounded. Yeah, well, I think it's one of the strengths of women, or I read somewhere that our movie is apparently a, an homage to the complexity of women. I think that's very true. I think women are, humans are very complex, we are more complex than we sometimes think, and women are very complex, and I, I am, and I think at some point, maybe when I did Phantom Fight, because there the same thing happened, I found someone who was, who let me be who I was, you know, working with the director, then was like working with Marie. I, I was allowed to to breathe, you know, as an actor. And then I decided, I think, that of doing something which feels like stepping out of the room. So here's me, and here's the room where I'm supposed to represent or please or seduce, especially as a woman. You know, this, the whole seduction game. And I just didn't go into the room. I just stayed here. I was doing everything the same. I was having dinner with Reynolds, but I was not going to do this thing that we do as women to when we are in a seduction situation or whatever. And I think that the Bergman Island is the same, or oftentimes I just want to be human and not a woman or a man, you know, it's just being human and alive, which is always complex and two things, grounded and ethereal, or here and not here. <laughs> and then in the world. Yeah.